Hey there, here we go into finding area between a parametric curve and the x-axis. Why yes, we can do that. It's never tested on the BC exam, and actually rarely do I see it come up in a typical Calc 2 class or even Calc 3 class, but it's awesome. And so I think it's important to complete your studies of parametric equations. Let's look at this. So we know that the area in general from A to B um, under a function y or f of x, so let's say like this is the curve f of x equals y, um, is equal to the integral from that x value a to the x value b working from left to right of y with respect to x. Now let's just say that this now is instead a parametric curve. So let's say that now this travels and becomes x of t comma y of t. Well how do we deal with that? How do we find the area of that curve? It's actually not as bad as you might think. So if a and b are now your time values instead, so let's say that you have like some time value a to some time value b, the y value is very simple. You're still finding the areas of rectangles. Like that's still happening. Right? The concept of this, if we take out one of these big rectangles, is the width with respect to x, the height, y, and you multiply them together and you get the area of one rectangle and add infinitely many of them up. So this y value is still y of t. That still gives you the height right, of your rectangle, so that would be y of t. But it's not just going to become dt. You still have to multiply it by the width dx. How do you find dx if this thing's in terms of time? That's the big question. Well, dx is the same as if I took the rate at which we're traveling in the x direction, and I multiply it by a small change in time, that equals out to a small change in x. Think about it again. The rate at which we're traveling in the x direction times the amount of time we travel for equals the amount of displacement, the direction that we've gone in, the x direction. So dx becomes dx dt times dt, or as I like to often write it, x prime of t, that's dx dt, times dt. So that's the x prime of t, and that's your formula. That's it for the area between a parametric curve and the x-axis. Let's put it to use. All right, this will be a quick video. It's not so bad. So we've given we. I've given you that x of t is 3 cosine t and y of t is sine t. And this is the curve. That's what x of t comma y of t looks like. We're asked to find the area of the region bounded by this curve um, and the x-axis. So we're talking like this area right in here, all that stuff right there. So if we take a look at this thing, just take like one representative rectangle, we're going to be adding lots and lots and lots of rectangles with width dx and height y. But remember, this is parametric, so that's y of t, and this is dx dt times dt. And we're going to multiply those two things together and then add up many of them. So the area of one of those rectangles would be y of t times, and that's going to be dx dt times dt. So now from there, what we're going to do is we're going to add up many of those over the time interval from 0 to pi. Very, very sweet. That's it. That's the formula every single time. So y of t is going to be equal to sine of t, like so. dx dt, ooh, we don't have that. It's OK. We'll find it. dx dt, let's kind of do off to the side here, or x prime of t, if you will, is equal to negative 3 sine t, or the derivative of cosine is negative sine, times 3 is negative 3 sine t. Nice. So that's your xt, so that's times negative 3 sine t, ooh, dt. Very, very nice indeed. So I'm going to pull out that negative 3, and we're going to end up with the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared t dt. That's it. That ends up being the integral that will give us the area. Now, whether we do this by hand or whether we do this with a calculator, when we evaluate this, we'll get the area of this region. Now I'm going to do this one out by hand. Remember, and this goes way back. If you didn't learn this, you can check out my videos in chapter 8 on power reduction. Sine squared t is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2t all over 2. That reduces the power down. So that over 2 that we have going on, that will now be in here. I'm going to bring to the outside. It's negative 3 halves from 0 to pi of 1 minus cosine of 2t dt. Beautiful! Awesome! All right, so we're just going to evaluate this. Just keeping in mind that this is just straight up integration at this point. So it's minus 3 halves times the integral of 1 with respect to t is t. 
the integral of minus cosine 2t, we know that we're going to have a minus sine 2t. And the derivative of sine of 2t is cosine 2t times 2. But there's no 2 here, so I'll have to divide by that 1 half to balance it out. If you didn't like doing it that way, you could use u substitution. That's evaluated from 0 to pi. Let's see what we get. So I get negative 3 halves times, this is going to be pi right here, kind of an interesting value that we get out of this. So we get pi. Um, minus, this will be 1 half sine of 2 pi is 0. Interesting, very, very interesting what's happening here. I'm going to explain what's going on um, in, in a second. And then we've got the 0 that's coming into here. Sine of 0 is 0. We end up with a negative 3 halves pi. What's the deal with that? The reason why this value is negative, and this is very cool, you might be like, but the area should be positive. It is. We're going to take the absolute value of it. It is negative 3 halves pi. It's because of the direction that we're evaluating this. So as we go from 0 to pi, if you actually take a look at this thing, um, we actually end up starting out on this side of the curve and integrating from right to left. What does that do? Well, it ends up giving you a negative value because we're going right to left. So it is consistent with our concept. Why do we go right to left? If you plug in 0, your initial t value, you get 3 and 0. So that's this point here. And as we work our way over to pi over here, we work our way to more and more negative values. So this is our final value. So we're going from right to left. And in terms of parametrics, that's fine. It's just a movement. But in terms of area, we end up collecting negative x value, which gives us the negative value, hence the absolute value that is needed. And we get 3 halves pi. Wow. The main idea here, though, is take the integral, use this formula. If you end up with a negative value, don't sweat. It's probably because we integrated from right to left. All right, a very unique way of finding area when you have parametric curves. I loved it. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Peace.